Hi, in this short video I want to show you how I model a personal last, a bespoke last. Um, I do that in Rhino, you see here uh, the Rhino screen and on this screen a lot of things are visible. Uh, of course you've got toolbars and so on and the layers and here grasshopper but what I've got uh, for stuff to model my last that's a blueprint an imprint a 3d imprint scan from a foam box imprint and a standard last basic last um, this is the last I use for almost every last I design because it's so deformable I can make it into any last you can think of um, the blueprint I have also uh, put here the, a 2D scan of the planter surface of my feet. Um, that's nice, but I normally use a blueprint uh, because uh, there are some issues about the outline from a 2D scanner. I won't go into that too deep now, but I use this blueprint. Um, this last doesn't fit and it doesn't have the right sizes and I have to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is to uh, reposition the 3D scan of the phone box and the blueprint. So I have some stuff to uh, relate my last to. Um, But before I do that, uh, I want to tell you first some things about this last. I have a last on the right side too. Um, but I will not uh, show it and I'll leave this too. Um, and I'll hide this. 3D scan from the phone boxes and the blueprints. So I can say something about this last. This last is generated by Grasshopper. Um, there are a few things you can see. It's a more or less orthopedic last. It has a very little bit of uh, support here. It has no feather edge in the medial arch. It has no feather edge here. I can do that, but normally I make a supplement. That's, that's the insole. And then I don't want sharp uh, corners here. I mostly want a sharp co corner, a, feather, a sharp feather edge around the heel and always around the nose part. Um, I cannot model this last because it's generated in grasshopper. I will show you how that looks. Um, here I have the definition of grasshopper that um, generates the last. I will not go too deep deep into this later on maybe. maybe. But to model this last uh, it's surrounded by a cage. That's this cage. And this cage has only a few. There's another one for right. But I'll switch right off. <laughs> Everything I do, by the way, on the left last will... Uh, the, the, for everything I do with the left last, the right last will follow. Um, what I can do to model this last... Um, you can drag the control points. Oh, I have bacon. And by dragging the control points of the cage, you can alter the shape of the last. I'll do some crazy stuff. Make a clown shoe out of it, or make a very pointed nose type. 
um, can do all, all kinds of crazy stuff but that's that's how I model the last you can also model it in a more generic way uh, one day scale or 3d scale or you can put it into another cage so put a cage inside a cage that's an interesting concept um, let's do it in a bounding box world so now you have a 3d cage and I can do things like this okay all this history see but I will not do that I'll leave it to this with this cage I can model the last in a more um, global way but what I also can do is bake the last this gen by grasshopper generated last I can bake it And now I have a sub D last. On both sides, I'll delete this one. And I'll get rid of the blueprint on the right. Um, I can switch on the control points of this last and model it in a very detailed way. So let's say I want some more Alex Valves see that's not nice but it's the idea or make it a more pointed toe it longer or um, give some more room at the end step okay. and there are all kinds of modeling tricks I can change the direction where my gumball moves this this set of three arrows it's called a gumball and you can drag and pull it into different directions you can use it as uh, the world axis um, align to world so now it goes in the XYZ direction and you can do it aligned to object so now the blue arrow is pointing in the direction of the normal of the of the surface um, okay so I think you get the idea of how I can model this last in any shape I want but this is the more detailed way I'll get rid of this one Now what I first want to do is to align the foam box and the blueprint. So I'll switch on the blueprints, I'll switch on the foam boxes and I'll switch off the last for now and the cage. Um, oh no, I will leave the cage on. That's easy to use for aligning gumball align to world okay now I'll start aligning rotate And 
I'll scale this a bit to get a bit. I will need some extra space for the toe, uh, but that's for, s for later on. Okay, I'll get rid of this target gate cage, and now I'll align this one. What uh, is an easy way to align the phone box scan with the blueprint? is to let it sink through the blueprint and you have a nice view of what's going on. Another thing is the pro and supination. In this case I want to keep it almost flat. And of course how much heel lift you want to give this uh, last later on. Okay, that's nicely aligned. And I'll do it for the other side too. Ah, later on, later on. I'll just leave it because otherwise it takes too much time. Okay, now I'll see, look at the side view, I'll put it on zero and I want to have a heel lift of about 1.5 uh, centimeters, so I'll rotate it from this point, from the ball, from the heel to about you can see it on the bottom uh, bar. Okay, that's good enough. And you'll see the toe off is not what it should be. And that's because when you stand in the phone box, uh, your foot is flat on the ground. So also this, this line, this heel line, is not something that I want to copy exactly inside the the last. Uh, to make myself uh, make life easier I'll bend it a little bit okay and what I also can do this top um, I don't need I can cut it away and I want to make sure that I don't have too much pronation. I'll set this to the view, the C plane. The C plane is the construction plane. Um, that's where all the movements are in the construction plane. Okay, that's better. And I'll have a look if the sizes are a bit in the same direction. Okay. I made it transparent, as you see. To make life easier, I'll cut off the top surface of this scan. And what I can do to cut it is make a surface. Extrude the surface. Now I see where I can cut it. Normally in the medial arch I want it a bit higher, as you see. Okay, that's good enough. So let's trim this. Mesh trim. OK, 
okay, you can delete it. This is a bit easier. See? Um, okay, now it's time to bring in the last. Here's my last, and I want a cage, otherwise, I cannot do anything. at this moment. Maybe it's a good idea to change the color of the foam box because at this moment they both have the same more or less the same color, the last and uh, the foam box. Uh, links. What shall I do? Okay, let's do dark green, that's a nice color. I can make the last a bit more transparent, so I can see what I do. Bring this more inside the last. Okay, and well, this is. Well, I'm almost there, <laughs> in fact. Um, the sizes. I want to have a look at the size of uh, this last, the sizes of this last, the circumferences, and to f find those uh, sizes, I have a set of um, planes, surfaces, these, and these planes have to intersect with this last, and when they intersect with the last, they give the length of the in intersection uh, curve. So I must place these um, planes uh, aligned with where I took my measurements. Um, a thing that's always a gamble is the the, the I'll get rid of the. Um, I have to bring them in place. What I do is I look in the direction of the plane and then I rotate it so that it's aligned with where I took my measurements and now I see okay that's where I it's more or less okay. Well, this isn't. It, it's not science. This it's, it's not 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 always perfect. Um, there are a lot of things to say about uh, circumferences, um, but maybe for later. I'll get rid of the phone box. Cannot see where I yeah. Okay, and this one. Okay, I can switch on the sizes now. You see. 2747, I'll get rid of the, now you see the intersection curves, 274.7, so this 0.7, that doesn't mean anything, <laughs> it's uh, a one tenth of a millimeter, uh, and these are the millimeters, um, so this is 273 milli 273 millimeters and this is 274 millimeters so that comes close 251 uh, 266 and 280 that's it that's a bit too small too narrow so I'll change that uh, by the way 
um, these measurements are taken without socks on and uh, in the end I will have to add a bit extra space for the sock and depends on what thickness of socks you wear but that depends it's in this case it's about uh, four millimeters extra but I can do that later or maybe I forget that <coughs> that's a simple offset um, okay so on the instep there's here is not enough and the ball width is not wide enough so what I do now let's switch off the transparency I want to get to 266 switch on this You see the toe, it's always irritating me there when my lasts are not wide enough. Let's make it a bit more pointy. This is no problem. I can, well, maybe, maybe it is. It's a bit too much. Okay, 278, that's almost there. Okay. There are other sizes you can measure, but uh, that's for some, that's for another time. Um, okay, so now it matches the, the blueprint nicely. see and now is the difficult part how to match it with the imprint of the phone box I'll switch off the blueprint switch on the phone box <coughs> let's get rid of the sizes for now I'll just model it a bit without too much comments because now um, well, this is about how you model lasts and this video is how I do that and not how a last should be that's maybe for some other time but people who mo know how to make lasts will recognize some things I'm doing here right now I don't need arch support. I have a bit hollow foot. So, no arch support for me. Not too much. And that also changes the, the size of the uh, circumference of the insep. Um, let's make things a bit transparent. Now I know when I make a last I should always shorten it a bit. There's always some extra room in this foam box. If you make the last exactly according to the foam box, you'll have too much uh, room here. So this is okay. Um, maybe I can show you some pictures of my feet later on, but I have a quite pronounced heel. So I, I also use pictures, by the way, 2D pictures of the feet when I, I'm doing this. Um, the thickness of the toe part. Um, well, you can measure it 
uh, you can also measure it uh, in, in Rhino, of course. Analyze distance. The thickness from here to there is 31. That's a bit too much for my feet. Um, what I also do is uh, put it in a, uh, uh, a zoom one to one. Oh, sorry, here's a one to one. And then I, you cannot see that because <laughs> it uh, uh, records my screen and not me. But I put my my thumb. Uh, in front of the screen and then I can see how much uh, space I have because the the thickness of your thumb is more or less the same as the thickness of your toe big toe that's a tip okay um, matches the foam works nicely maybe I have a bit not enough here on the uh, BM5 okay but what I will do now is bake it like I shown before and I make a sub D last out of it um, get rid of Now here you have this sub D last, and you see it's uh, although I have been pulling and pushing uh, against the shape, um, it's still nicely smooth. You can also check the smoothness by um, using environment map, make it in a metal shape or. Zebra. You can check the smoothness. Um, but now I can also add some detail to this last. That's the last thing I'll do on this last make it a bit more spacey here as you see what all the th all the tools I have to to model the last uh, I can do with this last what I want most uh, cut systems for last design don't go this far and then I want to uh, model last and I don't have the tools to do that and I hate that my idea is um, I only want to use cut uh, when it doesn't um, limit me in my possibilities I want to have the same freedom as I have when I model last by hand I think this is okay and you can keep on doing this for hours if you want <laughs> maybe a bit more a bit wider yeah it's it's also what 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 you like and what you don't like okay now I'll switch off the phone box. I have my last here. I always check for some extra last things. Uh, it's a bit nicer. Okay, this. Let's make this curve a bit nicer. You see, you can you can do anything you want. This curve is not smooth enough. You see that? I'll just do that a bit like that and a bit like that. 
it like this. You can go on for days if you want, <laughs> making it better and better. And the problem is also always at what point do you stop? At what point are you satisfied? Okay. I think this is okay for a very comfortable shoe. Okay. You see the on, on the, the the right side everything follow the left side. Uh, maybe this last is a little bit uh, too much adduction. Um, I can bring in the big cage again, bounding box world. These are things if you have to do that by hand, you know, you have to uh, grind on this side and put extra material on that side and now, now I only have, I only <laughs> have to drag a, a little bit. So, um, there are a lot of advantages of doing this. Okay. Now, I'm almost ready. I'll delete this cage. Um, Now to send it to a milling machine or a 3D printer, you uh, always need a mesh, uh, point STL, or uh, and this is a sub D loss, so you cannot send it directly to uh, to a milling machine. The only thing you have to do is to say, okay, let's mesh this thing. You can uh, say how many uh, vertices you want. This is okay. Okay. Now I have here a mesh, and this is the last I can send to the milling machine. I'll we'll go to wireframe, you see the differences. Modeling this last is a lot of work. Modeling this last is much faster. But I can send this to the milling machine and then have it. Uh, get it inside the real world okay i hope you liked this video bye